Hey, good morning, everybody. Morning. Oh, really? That's how we're going to be? Morning. Good morning, everybody. Morning. There's either two types of people. I shared that with my wife this week. There's two types of people I read. It said you're either the kind of person to say, oh, wow, it's already 7 a.m., or you're the kind of person that says, oh, it's 7 a.m. And unfortunately, these two people marry each other. Oh, this is a tough crowd already. <laughs> Look, you're either excited to be here or you're not. I can't do it for you. It is the Spirit of God in you. It is the praise and worship that brings forth His presence. And it's our ability to receive the Word that changes everything. So I ask you this morning, even though it's wet and drizzly and rainy, are you here to praise and worship God? Amen. 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 Okay, well, at least we're on the same page. I feel like it's one of those things that when God changes your message, He does it for a purpose. And I'm with God on that. I'm all for Him doing that. And so He's kind of shaking the foundations this morning. And uh, when I got here, He decided to change the message. So I'm going to send this out to whoever it's for, but it may just be for me. But I guarantee you, there's some people in this room who need to hear it. What I'd like for you to do is turn to 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6. And as you're turning there, I want to give you some premise behind this message. I want to give you some promise behind this message. And I want to give you some security in this message. Uh, I said I wasn't going to discuss what had happened over the past three or four months again, but it's been brought to the forefront on my heart and mind today simply because of the effect it has had on us as individuals. The effect it has had on us as families. The effects that it's had on us as church bodies. And I want to approach it today with some tact. And I want to approach it with truth and the word of God. And I want us to understand something. We were told that we were facing a pandemic. We were told that murder hornets would come. There has been rioting and looting. We've even had some crazy old sand in the air the past two days. I mean, we are getting hit with things that if someone asked me when I was a kid if you would ever see this in your lifetime, I would have said no. So to say that I was unprepared for these things would be a lie. First of all, I have yet to see any murder hornets. I'm not saying they don't exist. I've just not seen any out on Barron River Road. I'm thankful for that. I'm just saying. We did see some grayness to the sky yesterday, possibly today. But this pandemic, this virus has affected a lot of things. And here's what I want to go, where I want to go with that today. For the past five months, each one of us have been under some undue stress, pressure, change of environment, and things have not been the same. It affected our way of life, our patterns our habits, and messed up everything or so we thought. It threw off our daily schedules. It changed how we work or where we work. It changed whether we had a job or we didn't have a job. Whether we had income coming in or we had no income coming in. Whether we were depleted or defeated, it affected us mentally. And most people, when we're affected mentally, we lash out in the physical. When we are short-lived in the mind, we are quick with our tongue to react. We have been hateful at some times. We have been scared at some times. We have been fearful at some times. We have been uncertain at some times. And to say that this hadn't had an effect would be a lie because it's had an effect just on the church body. It has been divisive. Politics have been divisive. Communities have been divisive. And where I want to go with this today is simply this. What we fail to see is that we are among physical things. But the physical things were proof positive this all began with spiritual warfare, not physical warfare. Spiritual warfare is around us every day. In the ways that we don't think we see or the ways that we don't believe, spiritual warfare is there. And so today I've chosen 2 Kings chapter 6. And we're going to talk about Elijah. And we're going to talk about the king of Syria. And we're going to talk about Elijah's assistance. And we're going to use this as a background to paint a picture here. Now pick up with me in verse 8. Now the king of Syria was masking and making war against Israel. And he consulted with his servants, saying, My camp will be in such and such and such and such place. And the man of God sent to the king of Israel, saying, Beware you do not pass this place, for the Syrians are coming down there. Then the king of Israel sent someone to the place which the man of God had told him. Thus he warned him, and he was watchful there, not just once or twice. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was greatly troubled by this thing. 
And he called his servants and said to them, Will you not show me which one of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, Lord, none. O king, but Elijah, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. So he said, Go and see where he is, that I may send and get him. And it was told, saying, Surely he is in Dothan. Therefore he sent horses and chariots and great army there, and they came by night and surrounded the city. And then when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So Elijah answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened his eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. Pray with me. Father, let us not overlook the great battle of spiritual warfare. Your word tells us that we don't struggle with flesh and blood, but of principalities and the things in the high places. Lord, let us realize that the spiritual warfare has an effect on us not only mentally and physically, but it causes us to be different than who you've called us to be, that we need to shake this off. And we may not have been prepared for what has happened over the past three to five months, but Lord, today can be the day that we are empowered by your Spirit, we are set free by the Son, and we can declare victory in Jesus. For in your name I pray, amen. amen. The king of Syria is plotting against Israel. And every time that he plots or plans an attack, somehow the Israelites seem to know that he's coming. And he starts to get frustrated. Over and over, every time he plots an attack, they're not there. They know not to be there. And so he calls his own men in and says, what is going on? Would one of you tell me who the mole is? Who's the traitor? Who's going out and telling the people where we're going to be? He said, none, it's not us. It is the man of God that he hears what you whisper in your bedroom and tells the king of Israel. Let me explain something to you. Any kind of attack from the enemy, any kind of attack from the enemy, God knows the enemy's battle plan. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? It may catch you off guard. It has never caught God off guard. And one of the things that the enemy loves to do best is he likes to strike fear in God's people. Because fear is the weapon of choice of the enemy because of the outcome that it has on so many people. When you are scared, you will stay still. When you are afraid, you will not think, you will not move, you are afraid to do anything. You're afraid to go out, you're afraid to stay in. You're afraid to go to sleep, you're afraid to get up. You are afraid to do anything. And so fear is a tactic from the enemy that has never caught God off guard. And one who is the man of God, Elisha, the prophet sent by God, not only knew what this king was saying in private, he was revealing it in public. Know this, if you will listen to God, get in his word, seek him in spirit and in truth, and pray to him, God will reveal to you all battles that are going on around you. The problem is, not only once we will know, it's how we respond to them. We have a tendency to make excuses as though it's not our fault that we ended up in trouble. The king of Syria says, let me know where this man is, and I will go get him. They said, he's in Dothan. Do you think Elijah didn't know that the king and his men were coming for him? If he knew everything else, he knew he was coming for him. Now let me ask you, would that strike fear in you knowing that a king and his army were coming to get you specifically? Would you go ahead and pack what you could, pack real quick, get out, leave at 3 a.m. just so you could get out of town and tell nobody know where, where I went? Would you do that? You see, that's fear. Elijah had nothing to fear because he knew who he served and he knew who was with him. And when you are confident of where you stand, that is strength. That is strength. So let me ask you, whose presence do you stand in this morning? The shadow of Almighty God or the shadow of self? The presence and power of Almighty God or the presence of self? Because if you stand in self, you will be afraid. But if you stand in the presence of Almighty God, there is nothing to feed. He not only went to give him, Elijah knew he was coming. And they came at night. They came in the darkest hour so they could surprise him. Isn't that the way the enemy works? Doesn't he come when you least expect it? 
in the way you least expect it, and attacks and things that you didn't even think were important, but it messes up stuff enough that it may not get to your core right away, but he messes up the outside things, and they have a way of trickling in over time. I want to tell you something. I've met with more people in the past three to five months that have talked to me about how they feel like they're depressed, how they've lost their job, how they've lost their income, that they are going through divorce because of this, that they are seeking counseling, that they are stressed out, they are overwhelmed, and they do not know what to do. Now, you tell me that the enemy didn't plant that in them. You tell me that the enemy didn't come at night and shake the small things to get to the big things. You see, it don't have to be a big bomb. It has to be small planned attacks. He don't come in with a haymaker. He don't come in with a knockout punch. He comes with jabs. They're called buffets. He comes to buffet you, Paul says. Little, quick, small, slow punches to the body. That's how they end. Elijah didn't leave and Elijah didn't move. The servant wakes up. He looks around the city and he sees that they are surrounded. I don't mean just he brought a few people. I mean, he brought everybody in the army. They are in camp, they are surrounded, and they are encamped around the whole city. The city didn't stand a chance, the servant didn't stand a chance, Elijah didn't stand a chance, according to society. Now, one of the things I'd like to mention here is we have got to stop putting our faith in society. Amen. Understand, I need you to turn off the TV. I need you to turn off the news. I need you to even turn off social media. I need you to stop getting 13 hand information that's not true and it's already been twisted. I don't need you to fact check it. I don't need you to read it. I don't need you to put it in your mind because the truth of the matter is if you would focus, focus more on the word of God rather than the word of man, you would not have things so twisted. You would not be influenced by the things because society would tell you it's dark times. We're in a, a pandemic. We're going to go through it. We're, we're all going to die. Do you understand what I'm saying? We start to believe that. And when we start to believe that, we live that way. Elijah was a firm believer in God, and he told his servant, Do not fear, verse 16, do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with you. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. You want to talk about confidence in God? Elijah had it. He didn't try to run. He didn't get up. He didn't hurry away. What he did do was take someone who was scared and encourage them with words of affirmation and words of faith. Words of wisdom come from the Word of God. Stop telling people what you think and start telling people what God declares is true. And that is His Word. And I love the fact that He tells him, do not fear for those who are with us are more than those who are with Him. And sometimes people, when they lack faith, when they're scared, when they fear things, they don't truly see. And so today what I'm going to ask you to do is simply see beyond what you think you see. See beyond what you think you see. Some of you right now are seeing a divorce. See beyond that. Some of you right now are seeing the loss of a job. See beyond that. Some of you are right now are dealing with the sickness in your family, the loss of a loved one. Some of you are dealing with things that we don't know about. You've become depressed. You've become anxious. See beyond that. Because the enemy is trying to use these things to break you down. But I declare to you today, as God is my witness, He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And if you will just open your eyes, you will see that there are more around you that are for you than there ever will be against you. In the name of Jesus. He said, pray that his eyes would be open. And then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. Now understand something here. Those horses and those chariots weren't there for the servant. They weren't there for the city. Who were they there for? Elijah. And when someone is faithful to God, other people benefit from someone else's faithfulness. Guess what? God didn't just protect Elijah. Who did he protect? The servant and the city. The servant and the city. Just because of one man's faith, one man's dedication, it changed everything for his assistant and the city. 
If you will start seeing beyond what you think you see, if you'll stop seeing the right now and look to the future in glory, if you'll cast your eyes and your heart and your disposition on heaven, nothing that happens to you right now will end it all. It will be the next step on your way to glory. Not only did he see them, he was encouraged. And Elijah prayed. And he prayed that that army would be stricken blind. And God did that. He struck the whole army blind. And later on, Elijah ends up taking that army and leads them into the army of the Israelites. Take them into the whole city. He tricks them. Here's the funny thing. They could have easily been defeated. They could have been killed. And Elijah says, no, give them food and water. Send them on their way back to their master. And it says they were never troubled by Syria again. I don't know about you, but I know how I'd be. If I got my enemies alone and they've been stricken blind, I'd go ahead and take them out. Wouldn't you? I mean, I know you're not supposed to say that from the pulpit, so I would have took them out. <laughs> if you've got it right there in front of you, go ahead and take it out, right? That's your enemies. You're just like, man, if I just knew who was doing this to me, I'd go ahead and take them out. Well, let me present it to you like this, because that's not what Elijah did. Elijah's faith was that God gives the victory. The battle is what? The Lord's. So let God do what He's going to do. I'd like to share something with you right there, right now, to put this in perspective. A lot of us don't like spiritual warfare and being called out on things because it brings to light sins we already know about that we keep hidden, yet we proclaim we have no idea why any of this is going on. Now, I didn't expect you to say amen. I didn't expect you to nod your head. But let's be real honest with one another today. The Bible says if we are faithful and just to confess our sins, what is God faithful and just to do? Forgive those. So if we're not confessing, if we're not fessing up, we're holding on to those. And as long as we're holding on to those, we're allowing spiritual warfare to influence day after day after day. It will wear you down. It will make you tired. And finally you get to the point that you do what? You throw your hands up and you give up. If you are in this room and you have never thrown up your hands and walked away, I envy you. Because I've gotten to the point in my life where it seems so easy just to throw my hands up and walk away. That's what I kind of go to do. Anybody else like that? You just like, that's not what God wants. When he says throw your hands up, he doesn't say throw your hands up to walk away. He says throw your hands up and worship me and I'll take care of the battle. That's right. I'll take care of the battle. How many people like spiders? All right, we got one, we got Dallas. I'm going to ask that she be removed right now. <laughs> hey, we were over at some friend's house yesterday for a birthday party, and one of the things they had was this uh, cube in glass. I don't know, it's terrarium, is that what it's called? Terrarium. See, uh, it sounds smart, but I don't know what that is. It's just a glass. It's an aquarium without water. And they had a tarantula. And they were showing it to me as if I needed to see a spider because I don't care. And it had molted. So it looked like there was two in there, but it was really one. So it looked like two, and so that made me not want to see it anymore. A lot of people don't like spiders. My son's not a fan of Granddaddy Long Legs. How many people grew up with Granddaddy Long Legs? You go pick them up. Yeah, my son's like, hey, there's a spider. I'm like, yeah, that won't hurt you. How many people have seen an increase in spiders this year? We've got wolf spiders. We've got some brown recluses. I think Melissa got bit by one not too long ago, didn't you? I was hoping she'd have her insurance, but she didn't. Anyway. I don't like spiders. And I've noticed on our front porch that they build webs on the corners of the house and then all the way through the front porch. And so what I found myself doing is when I'm out there sweeping the porch, I take the broom and I see those webs and I do this. I just clean out the cobwebs and I just wipe them down. Then I go rub it in the grass. Anybody else do that? Use something to kill spiders? Just take the spider webs down? Okay, understand something. By taking down the web, am I killing the spider? No. The spiders come back. I can take the web down, take the web down, take the web down, and guess what? Those spiders are coming back. You know why? Because it ain't nothing for them to rebuild. And that's exactly how we treat the sin in our life. We treat it like spider webs, and we try to kill the web rather than killing the source, which is the spider. You can't kill your own sin. Only God can. And there comes a point in life and a point in time that when you're afraid, understand that you have brought fear on yourself because you live in fear, because you live in sin, and you refuse to give it up. Take the spiders, take the sin to God who made them, and let Him get rid of them. That way they don't return. Stop taking down webs and get to the sports source. Start confessing your sin. Live differently. Stop returning to your sin. Be empowered by those things. 
if we would only open our eyes to see what is truly going on. I don't think we would live in fear. Isaiah 54, 17 says this, No weapon that is fashioned and formed against you shall succeed, and you shall refute every tongue that arises against you in judgment. This, this, is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their vindication from me, declares the Lord. It says, no weapon formed against me shall what? Prosper. Prosper. Did it say that no weapon should be formed against you? No. no. It said there will be weapons formed against you, but they shall not what? Prosper. Stop living in fear and start activating your faith. Be like Elijah and not the assistant. It doesn't matter how many armies the darkness brings against me. There are more with me in the name of Jesus than there will ever be against me. And when we start living on that side of faith, it's a whole lot easier to see the webs come down and the spiders be gone. It's a whole lot easier to have a clarity of mind. But what we don't do is we don't receive what we believe. We don't change what we need to. And so we further carry ourselves into darkness rather than walking towards light. It says the Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before you. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven other ways. That's from Deuteronomy 28, 7. It says in Isaiah 58, 8, Then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your real guard. In Philippians 4, 19, And my God shall supply every need of yours according to the riches and glory in Christ. 3 John verse 2 says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things, be in health, just as your soul prospers. If we started standing more on Scripture, we wouldn't be seeking further in sin. It's a battle of the mind, to be honest. And whatever controls your mind will control what you do physically. Whatever controls your mind will control what you do physically. There will be weapons formed against you. There is light that overcomes darkness. And our problem is we refuse to walk towards the light because it reveals things about us that we don't want anybody else to know. And we think if they truly knew these things about us, then they'd leave us. I would rather everybody leave me and know the truth and know that God has never left me than to live a lie just to keep friends. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? It's time to drop anger. Cut it away. Let the ship be free. It says where the, it says the, Lord, the Lord is spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Freedom. Freedom from fear. Freedom in faith. Freedom whether you have a job or not. Whether your bank account's fat or you ain't got a dime. Whether you're eating steak or you're lucky to have a bologna sandwich. Your faith needs to outweigh your fears. As we sang this morning, Behold our God. Behold our God. He is on the throne. And I think sometimes in our mind, we deviate from the course of what is right, and we feel like somehow He's not there anymore, or that He's taking a break. God has never taken a break. God never gets tired. He never gets wore out. You can't trouble Him. You're not catching Him at a bad time. God has always been the same yesterday, today, and forever. God has been the same in the past three months, in the past five months. God will not forsake you. So I want to ask you today, are you willing to see beyond what you think you see? Are you willing to start agreeing that maybe part of your problem is you lack faith and you lack understanding that you're going through a spiritual battle? It is trying to grasp your mind to give you a wrong perspective. And when you have a wrong perspective, you will speak wrong, you will act wrong, you will do wrong, and that will never what? Make it right. I pray for a lot of people right now. I know you're going through some struggles. I know you're going through some financial struggles. I know you're going through marital struggles. I know you're going through personal struggles. I know you're going through addictions. I know you're struggling with when and how to come back to church or if you're even coming back. This is really shaking things up. But trust me, God is still on the throne. He's still in control. And He will always be. And as long as my faith is in Him and my trust is in His promises and not His premises, if I know His Word, I will act it out, I will live it out, and I will be a living testimony that Jesus Christ said it best when he said it is finished it is over it is done shut it down today you can receive that through faith in Jesus Christ you don't have to live in misery you can live in victory 
even when it looks like all the battle of all the armies are surrounding you, guess what? I'm at best being a warrior when I'm on my knees seeking the power of God that can overcome it all. If you want to see your life change, get in prayer. You want to see your situation change, get in prayer. You want to see your marriage change, get in prayer. You want to see your finances change, get in prayer. You want to see your addictions broken and set free? Get in prayer. You want to see your depression go? Get in prayer. Because it is hard to pray to God and not be answered. He may not answer the way you like. He may reveal things into you you didn't want to be brought to the light. But know this. Everything that's dark must be brought up to the light. It must be confessed to be forgiven. I will close with this. A lot of the times we focus on the light that shines on us. And I borrowed this quote, and I, and I do apologize. I don't remember who it's from right off the top of my head, but I think it's Corey Ten Boom. It says, if the light that shines on us is greater than the light that shines in us, the light that shines on us will destroy us. We are seeking the approval of the people and society rather than the justice, grace, and mercy of God. God is the source of light. And if we don't have light in us, the light that shines on us is from the wrong source. And if you value what other people think and what society says more than what God says about you, then you will end up letting the light that's on you destroy you because you've not nourished the light that should be in you. There is coming a day that all of us will stand before God, Jesus Christ, His Son, for judgment. And He will tell us one of two things. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Or He will say, depart from me, for I never knew you. What will it be for you? Who's ready to start living in faith and stop living in fear? Who's ready to see beyond what you think you see? Who's ready to start killing spiders rather than just taking down plants? Who's ready to get real, raw, and honest with the Lord? And not only become a faith agent, but to be activated by your faith. And when you say, this is how I fight my battles, you don't do it physically. You do it in the presence of God, seeking His name's sake, His glory. And you say, God, I need you. I need you every day more and more in every way. Forgive me my sin. Let me not return to it. And may you be my Lord and King. May I submit to you in all things. Let's pray. Father, I know it's been a rough few months. I know these are crazy times. I know that we've probably not seen anything like this in our life. We weren't expecting it. We weren't prepared. But the truth is it didn't take you off guard. You knew exactly what was going to happen. You knew you were going to separate the wheat from the chaff. You knew you were going to shake foundations. And people were going to have to decide on where they stood. Lord, this isn't about a pandemic. This ain't about murder hornets. This ain't about an economic crash. This ain't about elections and politics. This ain't about some strange sand coming out of Africa. This is about you being on the throne and you being in control of it all. And Lord, when we get to a point that we trust in you more than ourselves, everything else will seem distant because it'll be darkened by the glory and the light that shines from your face. Lord, we won't get caught up in the darkness. We'll be following the right light. And what will shine in us will outshine what is around us. And we will give glory to you. Let us look beyond what we think we see and know that this spiritual realm is what we fight. It's a battle of the mind which takes over our spirit and takes over our physical actions. Lord, let us do what is right and let us bring to the altar and lay down what needs to go and let today be the day of forgiveness and salvation for that. Lord, may we look up to you and nothing else. May we stop trying to build self and start living for you. Lord, may we turn off our TVs, turn off social media, let us turn off the radio and let us get right with you in all things. From the household to our friends and family to our workplace, to the people we will meet along the street every day. Let us see opportunity to share the love of Christ and not our opinions. Let us stop shoveling out hate and start shoveling out love. Lord, more than anything, 
Let us be the light you call us to be in the darkest of places. In your name I pray. Amen.